Your entire identity is online today. And a skilled hacker might only take a couple minutes to get into all of your accounts and compromise your personal data. Moreover, giant corporations steal your data hand over fist and sell it for cash or use it to target ads towards you. And today I'm going to be going over three different tiers of protecting your privacy and security online in 2024. Now let's get right into it. So for level number one, we have the absolute basics of privacy and security. If you still use Chrome and Google for your everyday search engines, you are most likely in this tier already. In order to appeal to as many people as possible, we are not going to be switching out of these ecosystems. And if you would, join my ecosystem. I have a goal of hitting 800 subs at the end of April, and I intend to hit it by any means necessary. Thus, the first thing on the chopping block is security. And the most basic level of security is a password manager. And to fit in with the theme of Google services, something like Google Password Protect would be applicable here. This is where you're going to compile all of your passwords and data into one place. That way you can keep track of them and have complex passwords. Also, you'll never lose any physical booklets or forget as long as you don't forget the main password to your Google account. And speaking of Google account, your Google account is probably the center of your online life. It contains your emails and a number of personal data that could completely ruin you if it were exposed to outside influence. And of course, you want a long and complex password to help secure your account. However, a long password full of random numbers and characters will never be able to be remembered by the average person. Thus, you use something we call in cybersecurity, passphrase. And it would go something like this. My favorite penguin is blue 62, with dashes in between each word and a capitalized first letter. It's completely random, however, it's something that you can remember with relative ease. And to double down on your protection, you need to add a phone number to your account and add two-factor authentication. And do this for as many as you possibly can. And although, ideally for privacy, you would give up Google products, I understand that the average person is not gonna do this. So instead, we're gonna do our absolute best to secure our data in our Google account. And the first step is going to be to go into your Google account and gut every single piece of data that you can find, as well as turning off any settings for data collection, optional monitoring, or, or anything else under this banner. You might be horrified to find out that you have a log dating back years of places that you visited every single day via Google Maps. You also might be horrified to find that if you use Google Assistant, you have a voice list of recordings of yourself spanning back years. And you need to make sure to get rid of all of this data from Google's hands and make sure that it stops being collected on you. And in Chrome, we're gonna make sure that settings are privacy friendly. We're gonna get rid of search history, cookies, and all other forms of data that have been collected over time, and we're going to tell Google to stop collecting this kind of data. Also, we're going to install one of the most popular add-ons called uBlock Origin for Google Chrome. This will go a long ways in terms of defeating trackers and advertisements on the internet. It might not do everything, but it's a very good first step. However, be warned that eventually this will be killed off by Google in their never-ending campaign against ad blockers, since they hold a monopoly on ads. And remember, turning off these data collection settings are your duty for every single account you have especially if you are an iPhone user, as your Apple account can also hold this wealth of data too. Apple is not innocent, especially companies like Facebook. You should turn off any optional data collection that you can and delete any data they already have on you. Although this probably won't be enough, it'll be better than nothing. And now for the second tier, the expert level. Here, we're going to be abandoning almost all major products for open source free alternatives. And while a little bit of functionality and seamlessness might be sacrificed, it's all worth it for privacy and security. First of all, get rid of Chrome completely. Download the Firefox browser and use DuckDuckGo as your search engine. If you're using an Android phone, using the DuckDuckGo browser or the Firefox mobile browser is absolutely something you should do. Gmail? Nope. You sign up for a ProtonMail account immediately and route all of your Gmail to this account. Although if you're going to send emails, you can still use your Google account. But for the most part, you should be using this new ProtonMail account that is at least decentralized from Google, if not 100% safe. And speaking of Firefox, you're also going to want to make sure that that browser is set up for privacy and security as well. Make sure you're always using private browsing tabs, which is something that you can set up and set. Also, send do not track signals and put the security setting to the most strict you can. And again, for the add-ons, you're going to be adding uBlock Origin, as well as others like Privacy Badger, DuckDuckGo Essentials, and Decentralize. All of these will combine together to create a much safer online experience free of trackers. And while this is where you can look into things such as a VPN, anybody with a basic knowledge of networks will tell you that VPNs are definitely not the best when it comes to privacy and security. There is one called Mulvad that is not bad at all. However, routing your traffic through a VPN gives another person your data and doesn't really protect you from anything anyhow. And major corporations like NordVPN have been known to give away your data when police ask for it and have been breached on multiple occasions. Also, on any device that you can, change your DNS settings to 1.1.1.1 with a secondary DNS of 1.0.0.1, which is Cloudflare DNS servers. This will speed up your overall internet access and again, decentralize your data. Also, getting a host firewall like SimpleWall on Windows or NetGuard on Android would be a good idea here. This way you can block and control traffic from all apps on your device. Some might even choose to go a step further using the ADB bridge on your computer to disable apps on your Android phone without root access. If you'd like to see a video on this in the future, please leave a comment down below because I'd be more than happy to do a guide. Now that I've drawn on about privacy, the next step is security. First of all, that Google password manager, 
Nuke it. Absolutely not. You do not want any more of your data in Google than you have to have. Download this free tool called Bitwarden. It's a much better alternative. But just having your passwords backed up here doesn't mean anything. You're going to want to systematically go through your most important accounts and change them to the random passwords generated by Bitwarden themselves. Of random varying links of anywhere from 8 characters to 20 characters. And moreover, instead of just using your phone number as a two-factor authentication method, use time-based apps like Off. This adds another level of security, as old technologies like cell phone numbers are much easier to compromise. And of course, make sure to never get caught with your pants down without a password on your phone or your computer and make sure that both are encrypted on windows this is called bitlocker on android it should come stock this way but make sure that you have at least a semi-strong password to deter most people and if you use biometrics on your phone you might want to know that if you are ever apprehended by police they can force you to unlock your phone with a fingerprint while they cannot do the same with a password so if you ever really need to, I would recommend restarting or turning off your phone to force a password unlock on your phone if you're ever in a situation like this. Now, if you thought that was a lot of work, overwhelming, or complicated, you have no idea what the links some people will go to for privacy. This is our tinfoil hat section on people that are completely paranoid about online security. First of all, anything that resembles a major corporation immediately gets thrown out of the window. Instead of using something like Windows, you're going to be using secure alternatives like Cubes OS, which runs every single application in a virtual machine container, or Tails OS which is completely traceless, runs everything on the RAM, and as soon as you pull the USB out, it's gone. And its only internet access can be through Tor. Speaking of Tor, that is the only way somebody in this category would be accessing the internet. And Tor, if you don't know by now, is how people access the so-called dark web. It routes your traffic through three different random nodes, making it infinitely safer than a VPN, which you will not be using with Tor because using a VPN with Tor singles you out and doesn't actually make you any more safe. Your cell phone will, ironically enough, be replaced by something like a Google Pixel. Why is that? It's because these devices allow you to replace their stock firmware with custom firmware that has been de-googled, meaning there is no Google services running on them. And any Google service you want to use can be replaced by open source alternatives like MicroG, YouTube Vance, and other apps out there. To bring up Mulvat again, this is a VPN that you might consider using, as on Android now that you have root access, you can have a host firewall and a VPN running at the same time. And as for security, random passwords aren't enough anymore. Instead, you're going to be using something like DuckDuckGo's email protection to generate random emails for each account you have. This adds another level of obfuscation to each account you have, making it even harder to compromise. And provided this can be applied to you, taking random routes to work and changing up things that you do every day for privacy is essential. This is something that is recommended to people of high importance by cybersecurity professionals, as having the same routines every day makes it a lot easier to track and pinpoint where you will be, predict your location, and intercept your data. And for another level of added security, you might be compelled to only use public Wi-Fi like libraries or Starbucks. However, if you use this method, never leave your computer or electronic devices unattended and unlocked at the same time. This is how Dread Pirate Roberts, the founder of the infamous Silk Road, was caught. He was distracted long enough for federal agents to capture the data from his laptop while it was still unlocked. And while all of this may sound a little crazy or paranoid, and while by my own admission people who fall into this last category often do have something to hide, taking even basic steps to secure yourself online and make yourself more private in the digital age are necessary. Saying I have nothing to hide is a justification for being completely transparent online and allowing corporations to grab your data hand over fist is no excuse and is akin to saying I have nothing to say when your freedom of speech rights are taken away by the government. If you would, please leave a like on this video and comment for the YouTube algorithm. I intend to hit 800 subs by the end of April as I mentioned earlier and I'd be really really grateful if you would participate in that with me. Thank you for watching.